Um, Michoni Bamboni, thank you for uh, 20 Australian dollars. What's your opinion on 35 versus 50 volt capacitors on 6S? 35 is fine. Phantom FPV uses 50. That's because he goes hard. Uh, Phantom FPV uh, is the kind of guy who... Okay. Once upon a time, Phantom FPV didn't use screws to hold his camera into his camera mount. He glued his camera in place with E6000 adhesive. That's the kind of guy Phantom FPV is. Okay, now he screws it, and I think he still uses E6000, but he also screws it. I don't know. My point is that, that Phantom FPV will never be wrong in the way that he builds, but sometimes he'll be a little bit extra. You know what I mean? And so, like, if you decide you want to use 50 volts, more power to you. But some people are going to struggle to fit a big honking 50 volt, 1,000 microfarad capacitor in there, uh, in their build. And they're like, oh, can I use 35? And, like, my opinion is it's fine to use 35. 50 will give you a little more protection and a little more filtering, but 35 is okay. Um, the other thing I would keep in mind is, like, if you have the room for, say, a 50-volt 1,000 microfarad, would you be better with a 35-volt 2,000 microfarad, which maybe would be about the same size? Like, I don't know how the math actually works out. But I, I think that's an interesting question, and I don't know the answer. Like, I, I would love for someone with some engineering expertise to actually speak up on that. Would you be better off with more microfarads or a higher voltage rating because I don't 100% know the effect of exceeding the voltage rating. And it is true that on 6S, you probably have voltage spikes over the voltage rating of the capacitor. Sky Zombie asks, is LQ what I want on my OSD for both Crossfire and ELRS? Yes. Thank you for a $5 super chat, Sky Zombie. LQ is what you want. It's the number one. It, like, if you only were going to have one metric for whether I'm about to fail safe, it would be LQ. In reality, you probably should be watching both LQ and RSSI DBM and maybe SNR while you're at it. But, like, that can get a little overwhelming. So if you had to pick one, it would be LQ. At what value should I get concerned? In my opinion... A good way to think about it is that any LQ over 90% is essentially perfect. Any LQ between 80 and 90 is like, hmm, like yellow flag. And any LQ below 80 is, if not exactly red flag, like concerning, okay? If I'm regularly riding with my LQ below about 70, I, I, I'm concerned that, because like the thing about LQ is it's fine right up until it's not. Okay, so it can go from 70 to 40 to fail safe real fast. Whereas if you're above 80, 85, or certainly above 90, you're probably in pretty safe territory. Okay, um, I, I use that as a general round number for both Crossfire and ELRS. Um, the thing is, I've seen ELRS continue to fly at LQ in the 50s. Like as a pilot... I could feel the micro stutters. It wasn't great. And the whole time I knew that at any moment I would just drop out of the air. Okay. So like, you don't want to be flying like that. Like if you're trying to like break a world record and you're doing a long range run and there's a million dollars on the line. Okay. And you're flying out over the ocean. So you don't care if you crash because you're just going to go down in the ocean and I don't know, freaking choke a whale. I guess that's probably not good. Anyway, it's a hypothetical. Don't overthink it. Like, at that point, you're just going to fly till you fail safe. And it's going to go 60, 50, and you're going to feel the micro stutters. And you're just going to keep flying. And maybe it's going to go 40, and you're going to feel the micro stutters and keep flying. Right? And eventually it'll fail safe, and that'll be the end of your run. But if you're just a pilot having a good time, and you don't want to, like, crash and lose your quad, you're not going to push it that low. As soon as it gets it down below 80 into the 70s, you're going to be like, oh, maybe I should think about coming home. Do you think DJI will ever update the OSD symbol table in the O3 so we get full? No, never. Never. I never think, I don't think they will ever do that. I think that they have moved on in their dev cycle and, and they're developing for the O4. And there's the way that DJI works, in my experience, is the FPV product comes out and it's less than perfect. And there are features people want. And there is a, a window of perhaps four or six months where they do like one big update that gives people some bug fixes and firmware. And people go, oh, see, DJ is listening. And then they move on to the next thing. 
and you, they never fix it. They never fix anything again. I shouldn't say never, but and then occasionally, when the next generation comes out, they reach back and they do a real quick one last update on the last generation that fixes or changes one or two things before they move on. But no, I don't think they're ever going to update the fr the freaking font table for, so it works with iNav. No, I don't. They haven't. They haven't fixed the binding bug, where if you switch on the V2 goggles, if you switch between the uh, O3 and the Vista, you lose binds. Why would That's a major bug that affects a lot of people, and they've never fixed it, because the, the V2 doesn't exist for them anymore. Well, they're not going to do a, like a bug fix on some bug from a five-year-old product. And I think that's the same situation with the OSD table on the O3. So... Uh, DeMadden, thank you for being a patron. I got a RunCam Thumb Pro wired to my flight controller via UART. Can I display the recording status in the OSD? No, you can't. Uh, Betaflight, you, when you trip that switch to cause the camera to start recording, there's no feedback as far as I know. It just says, hey, start recording, and then, like, I, I guess it, I hope it worked. But, like, no, no, never mind. The RunCam Thumb Pro. There are some RunCam hybrid cameras where the... the uh, High definition camera is also the FPV camera, and you can see a recording indicator in the screen. But the Thumb Pro isn't like that, so never mind. One way that people have solved this problem in the past is you're gonna, you're not going to like this, but what you do is you take a fiber optic light pipe and you affix the fiber optic light pipe to the status LED on the camera. How do you do that? I don't know. 3D printing, glue. Spit and tape. I, I don't know. But your fiber optic light pipe pipes it around so you can see in the camera view that the LED is flashing. It's totally a kludge, but it does work. I don't think there's a way to do it in software. Joseph Diaz, will my lipo explode if I don't use it for a month? Yeah, absolutely. You guys, if you don't use your lipos for a month, boom! Big fire! Explosion! You didn't know that. Did you, how many? No, it won't explode if you don't use it for a month. No, it won't explode if you don't use it for a month. <laughs> so what you should do is you should put it at storage voltage. That will help because leaving it fully charged for a month will make it perform worse. It'll have more voltage sagging, increased internal resistance. And on, on, on like a, a, if you zoom out enough, it does slightly increase the chance that it might light on fire. Like if the internal resistance goes up. If you left the battery fully charged for like six months and you come back and it's all puffy, it probably would like just retire it, right? But it's not going to just spontaneously make it explode, no. Uh, make sure it's at storage voltage when you don't use it for a long time, and it'll be just as good as, as the day you left it when you come back. <laughs> 